I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I don't like Apple. I do. I'm using a MacBook. I dearly love my iPhone. I can even defend things like the Vision Pro or my favorite thing to defend everybody hates, the port on the bottom of the Magic Mouse. But there are certain things I can't defend Apple on. Most of those have to do with the App Store and how Apple tends to run monetization. Normally, when I talk about this, I'm just showcasing how they're fleecing devs and barely following the law. But we're going a different angle today because a really scary thing just happened and it actually for once affects me directly. I don't publish apps on iOS, so usually I can get out of the things Apple does to screw developers. But as a creator, Apple now hurts me too. What we're talking about today is Apple's 30% cut and specifically how Apple's 30% cut hurts creators disproportionately. I have a lot of experience here because I helped a little bit with getting subs working on mobile at Twitch. And the experience doing that was terrible. We're gonna have to diagram this and look at some numbers, so let's do that. When I was at Twitch, we wanted to iterate on how subs worked and add them to mobile. So you could subscribe to a creator, which if you're not familiar, is a way to pay a creator five bucks a month. Now it's six bucks a month to support them. So let's just go with the $5 number because that's what I'm used to and it'll make this work better in my brain. So someone pays five bucks to support a creator. And by default, the split for this was admittedly not very good. 250 goes to Twitch and 250 would go to the creator. This was the default split. We had the $5 paid and the $5 would get split 50-50 between Twitch and between the creator. If we were to visualize this differently, we have this rectangle. This rectangle is $5 and we draw a line right in the middle. Better way of visualizing this. A viewer spends $5, 250 goes to Twitch and 250 goes to the creator. This split sucks. This is one of the worst things that Twitch has done for a while now. That's why they introduced the Creator Plus program, or the Partner Plus, I believe it's called. Partner Plus means once you hit a certain threshold of subscribers, they shift the numbers, and Twitch will only take a 30% cut instead. So for the sake of making the math easier, I'm gonna change this to $10. So if we do that for both of these, we'll say that the creator was paid $10 by the viewer. It used to be $5 would go to you, $5 would go to Twitch. Or if you're Partner Plus, it would be $3 goes to Twitch, and it would be $7 goes to the creator. There's a lot of things that this is not including. Specifically, in this 3%, there's a lot of stuff that is being accounted for. There is payment processing fees. There's chargebacks. To be fair, chargebacks will affect the creator as well because they just won't get the money in the end. There's things like hosting and video costs. And if you know how much it costs to run Twitch, you know that those hosting and video costs are not being covered by the $3 Twitch is taking from these subs. There's a lot of things that this $3 gets split across for Twitch. And the payment processing fees part is not negligible. This is an important thing to take account of. If you look at a service like Stripe, which is the go-to payment processor, they charge 2.9% and a 30 cent fee per successful charge for a domestic credit card. So if we were theoretically using Stripe on Twitch, this $10, you take 3% of that roughly, which would be three cents, and you add the 30 cents on top. So if we were to be a little generous with our logic here, so obviously Amazon does their own payment processing, so they get a little bit more money and they have a slightly better deal, but there's the slice here that would be the um, three cents plus 30 cents. So this would be about 30 cents or 33 cents goes to Stripe. And then the remaining $2.70 or 67 cents goes to Twitch. So this would be the, the closest I could represent this using the public information that we have. So the creator gets $7 of the $10, Twitch gets 267, and then payment processing roughly covers 33 cents. If this was a $5 split, it would be worse because it still has to be 30 cents base because that's the base fee. So this would almost be double the chunk it takes. Thankfully, it's still a small number because it's 30 cents and 3%. But we need to talk about what happens when you subscribe on mobile. We're gonna go with the same $10 number. Let's grab this guy. If we subscribed on an iPhone, the fees get a little more brutal. I'm just gonna delete this part for now. And we don't account for the payment processing because Apple will handle that for us. If we leave the amount the same, Twitch gets $3. I need a good color for Apple. Let's do red for Apple, that makes sense. Apple gets $3 and then the creator gets the remaining $4 just be slightly longer than that. This would be the split if we just had this Apple's way because Apple's policy is they take 30% no matter what. 
this is horrifying. This is absolutely horrifying that Apple insists on getting their 30% on anything that is not the purchase of a physical good or service. So if you're renting an Airbnb, they won't take it. If you're buying something that'll be shipped to you on Amazon, they won't take it. But if you are providing a digital good, be it you're renting a book, you're renting a movie, you're buying a subscription to somebody's thing, Apple will always take 30%. It's insane. It is actually unfathomable that they get away with that. But there's a reason they get away with that. There's no competition. It's not like you can choose to give Apple 30% or use Stripe. Apple will not let you charge for digital goods in their applications in any way other than Apple Pay. It will get you banned from the App Store to provide an alternative method to pay. So your immediate thought might be, well, cool. What if I just link to our website and you can go there and pay there instead where there's a 3% fee instead of a 30% fee? Apple will ban you for that too. The policy explicitly states that you cannot indicate to users that they're able to subscribe elsewhere. You cannot tell a user they can go somewhere else. It's against the rules and you will get banned. So what a lot of services have had to do is in order to make sure that the pay split goes proper, because pretend this is like a movie that you're renting on Amazon. And we want to make sure Amazon gets paid properly. Or you're subscribing to YouTube Premium so you don't see ads anymore. So we need to make sure that the creators get paid enough. What they'll do is instead of doing this where the split gets worse, they'll make things a little differently. It will no longer be a $10 charge. They'll make it a $13 charge to account for Apple's bullshit fee over here. They add $3 to the price to account for the difference there. So the split could still be the same amount. And this is why Twitch subs cost more money on the phone because they have to, to make sure the creator still gets the amount they expect for a sub. If a creator expects $2 and 50 cents, they'll have to increase the price of a sub in order to pay Apple's fucking ransom fees. This is disgusting. This is unbelievable. But Apple has this policy for a reason, a couple reasons. The first is because they can, they can get away with it. But the more important thing is they're not thinking about the other part being split. The way Apple sees this is there's two sides. There's Apple and there's the application developer. In Apple's mind, this works like this. If we go back to the $10, what Apple sees is they get their $3 and then Twitch gets their $7. And Apple's thought is that this is fair because Apple lets you release the app on their app store. They don't charge you when people download it. They don't charge you for anything other than this fee and the $100 a year developer license. And they think this is fair because this side goes to the company and then this side goes to Apple. But that is anti-creator. Hear me out. Where this goes from bad to horrifying is what I was just showing. When this side is getting split, because now there's two splits happening. And this seems bad on Twitch. It's going to seem way worse in a second because there's platforms that are much fairer than Twitch's. If I take this $10 charge again and we scroll down, this time we're going to talk about the company. That is why we're doing this all right now. Patreon. Patreon is a lot more generous than Twitch. These are the two options that Patreon gives you. An 8% fee or a 12% fee, which gets you a partner manager, team accounts, the ability to have other people managing your stuff. But those are the two fees, both of which seem pretty high until you realize how high Twitch's fee is. And then it's not that bad. Let's go with the 8% here. So it's 8%, then 80 cents goes to Patreon. Make that a little bigger so it fits. I have to make the font smaller. There we go. And then of the $10, the creator gets $9.20. That's a good deal. It's not a great deal. That's a pretty good deal. Patreon makes their 80 cents and the creator makes $9.20 and gets a platform, gets everything managed. Really nice. But now we have to account for Apple. Once Apple gets their way of things, this falls apart quick because Apple takes their $3. And this, I, this isn't a scale, which makes it hard to like do just right. I'm going to do my best. Do you see the problem here? Apple makes three times more than Patreon does on a Patreon sub. Apple makes half as much as the creator does on a Patreon sub. Once you start splitting it up this way, once you realize that the non-Apple side of one of these splits is unfair, this falls apart quickly. And that's the problem. Apple isn't taking 30% cuts from companies. Apple is taking 30% cuts from every transaction. And that disproportionately affects the creator. Where if I subscribe to you on Patreon on the website for $10, you get $9.20 and Patreon gets 80 cents. If I subscribe on the mobile app for Patreon, Apple gets $3 and the creator only gets $6.20. That's insane. That is insanely anti-creator. Horrifyingly so. And this is a big part of why it took so long to add subs on the mobile app. Because Apple puts so many blockers along the way to get there. 
The reason we're talking about this right now is because Patreon has historically gotten around this. They had convinced Apple that they were a services company. The same way you would book an Uber, you would subscribe to a creator. And because of that, they were able to get around the fee by not using Apple Pay, just using their own payment processing. But Apple has finally cracked down on Patreon and the result sucks. Patreon now has to charge the 30% fee. Creators will need to choose whether to absorb the cost and charge the same price or to increase their prices. Android and web are not impacted. On top of that, there are certain ways of subscribing on Patreon that Apple will just not support with Apple Pay. One of Patreon's options is a per release payment process. So every time I put out a video, you subscribe to pay a dollar for every video I release. Apple doesn't let you do that. The server can't tell Apple, hey, this thing happened, charge this user. The way that the Apple Pay works is either a one-time fee that you charge and you auth when you're using it, or a monthly subscription, or a weekly subscription, which is super toxic and terrible. I don't know why Apple allows that, but they don't allow for you to do something more bespoke, like always subscribe on the first of the month, which is the way Patreon used to work, or pay every time you do a release. You can't do that at all. There are fundamental features in Patreon that they'll no longer be able to have because Apple's policy is bullshit. It's insane that there are features in Patreon that have to be removed entirely because it would make no sense to have a person that you can subscribe to on web, but not on the iPhone app because Apple specifically doesn't want to support this type of thing. Horrifying, genuinely terrible. And Patreon, to their credit, is doing their absolute best to work around this by letting the people, by letting the creator specifically choose whether they absorb the cost or they put it on the other side. So to go back to the diagram, they can choose if they want this split where Apple gets three bucks and they get 620, or they can choose to do it this way where the creator now on iPhone charges $13 and the $3 gets added for Apple. It's not a perfect split because the 30 percentages scale weird. It'd be a little more than $3. You get the point though. This is the options you have. You can either absorb it and make way less money, or you can still make the same amount of money, but then the creators could charge more. If this was just how it worked in the app, but it told you underneath, like in the UI, it was like, pay with Apple Pay or go to the website and subscribe there. This would be annoying, but fine. But Apple will ban you from the app store if you mention that you can go elsewhere to subscribe. If you tell them in the app, hey, you can use the website for a cheaper price, you will be fine. But they will not let you do that. That should explicitly be illegal. I think it is horrifying that Apple is able to so strongly restrict what payment processing options you have as a developer and as a user. And while this hurts companies, the point I'm trying to make here is that it disproportionately hurts creators because now the money that I as a viewer am trying to give to you as a creator is being cut twice, is being cut by the business, and then it's being cut again by Apple. That should not be allowed. People are asking in chat, is the EU able to regulate this out? No. The EU released the Digital Markets Act. I have a bunch of videos about that on my channel if you want to look at those. The Digital Markets Act was their attempt at allowing you to use different app stores to theoretically get around these things. The issue with the DMA is that Apple still can charge their fee. Apple still charges a 27% fee on transactions on different app stores. So if you live in the EU and you install the Epic Games Store or the Alt Store or any of these new stores that are going to be coming out, every time you make a purchase, Apple still charges their fee even if you're not using Apple Pay. And they reserve legal rights to all of your books to see all of the payments you've ever processed in the history of your business so that they can in court prove that you owe them money. So all the DMA does is add a bunch of weird restrictions to things that don't actually matter and then allow app stores that don't provide any of the things that we're looking for. They don't even let you publish apps that they haven't approved. You can only release something on your third-party app store after it goes through Apple's app review. So this does literally nothing. This is a shit piece of legislation. The people who wrote it should feel bad because it is a performative piece of legislation. It doesn't actually change fucking anything. It was, uh, people in chat are saying it was such a fumble. It was such a massive fumble. It's actually unbelievable. I can't even say their heart was in the right place because the reality was so far from what we needed. If you want to learn more about this one, again, on Theo Rants, the malicious compliance. Apple's new fees will kill free apps. This video is me talking about a lot of these things. So if you're interested, check that out. I'm pissed, I'm sorry, and I hope that we can start making a culture of people refusing to make purchases on phones. If you're using an app that has Apple Pay as an option, don't. Try to use the website if you can, especially if you're trying to support a creator. Do not support people through Apple Pay. Support people through web pages. Support people through fucking, I don't care, I'm not a crypto guy, but fine, go pay them with Bitcoin, I don't give a shit. Just do not let Apple 
take their 30% ransom fee on these things. The way the judge put this in the Apple versus Epic case is something I think about far too often. Remember that $100 fee I mentioned? That's all you have to pay to publish an app. So if you're, I don't know, let's say you're Bank of America, your app costs Apple a ton of money to review, to distribute, to send to every iPhone in the fucking world. And at least in America, it's Bank of America. And they only have to pay $100 a year for that. But if I'm an indie dev that makes my whole living off of my mobile game that I made, and people spend money on that mobile game, Apple gets 30% of that. As a result, people like indie game devs, people like creators on Twitch, we are subsidizing Bank of America's costs. Bank of America could be on the App Store for free because we are the ones paying the fees for them. That's insane. That is such a failure in the way these things are structured. Obviously, running an app store, doing app reviews, publishing things, updating phones, all of this stuff does cost Apple money, and they should get something for that. I totally agree it is within Apple's rights as the provider of this platform to make some money off of the thing they are providing, making it in a way that disproportionately charges independent creators and doesn't charge gigantic businesses is a fundamental failure in the system they have created. And that needs to be addressed. It's time for some legislators to step in. It's time to make this illegal because Apple will not change it otherwise. I honestly thought they would cave and do it because of just how toxic this shit is, but they won't. They have held so strong on this point because so much of their income comes from the App Store. Apple's App Store developer billings, including this fee, were $1.1 trillion in 2022. That makes up 35% of services revenue for Apple. That's insane. That's insane. That is way too much for them to just drop, but they have to make some real changes here. It is unbelievable they've gotten away with this for this long. And since they're not going to change it, we need to change this culturally where we refuse to purchase things through the app store if there are alternatives. And we need to change this legislatively. We need to be petitioning our legislators. We need to be pushing for people to act on this. And I don't say this a lot. It's rare I say the government should get involved in tech, but what Apple's doing here is a monopoly. And it is unbelievable they've gotten away with it for this long. People don't purchase an iPhone because they want to give Apple more money with every purchase. They purchase an iPhone because it's the ecosystem they know and trust. And Apple using their success in the phone market to take a massive fee from other markets absolutely should be against the law. That's all I have to say on this one. Let me know what you guys think and if I'm being too harsh on Apple or not. I have a feeling I'm going to do the usual thing where I get a bunch of Apple haters hanging out now. Then when I come with them in the future, they'll be pissed. It is what it is. Know that I don't hate Apple. I actually quite like them. I just think this policy sucks. Until next time, subscribe to your creators on Patreon's website. Peace.